Hey, 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 hey! Welcome to Reliable Source. I'm Jonelle. And I'm Kirsty, and we're both journalists at Europe's biggest newsroom, BBC News. And every week we come here to tell you about the stories that we've been the most obsessed with. All Stars is now over, and former Love Islanders Wes Nelson and Sanam Harry Nanan will be joining us. I'm on stage with Craig David. That is, that is one of the craziest moments of my life. Like, no, not a care in the world, but just going in, I was just like, I'm so glad I'm leaving because I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. We're going to ask them about what the UK's type is on paper and what their type is on paper. It's not all about looks, it's actually about how you're treated as a person and who they are, what they do, and not just if they've got a six pack or not. And we're also talking about some people who are filming themselves getting fired and whether that's a good idea or not. Let's go. So firstly, let's address the fact that we're in a new studio. If you're just listening, you won't be able to see this, but we're in a new room. We've got chilly lights, we've got pics, we've got mugs. It's looking gorgeous in here. It is incredible. And there's, you know, there's plants, there's greenery, there's space. My legs are on the sofa. So that's fun. And you know what else is fun? Love Island All Stars is finished. Tom and Molly won. We're recording this on Tuesday, obviously. Um, But we are going to talk all about Love Island, whether it reflects society, why everyone always says type on paper, what the hell does that mean? What is the UK's type on paper? Yeah. What 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 are you guys all like on paper? And is that correlating with what you like in real life? We're going to find out. We're going to look into it. So to talk to us about it, we've got Wes Nelson, iconic season six Islander in the studio. Welcome, Wes. That's good. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, <laughs> good. We just had a little dance break to dance some of your songs. Yeah, yeah. I was properly doing some moves. Some choreo, you getting actually. into it? I was getting really into it. Good, like, good I was. I actually forgot that, one, it was being filmed, and yeah. two, that the others are over there. <laughs> There we go. My there we go. That's, that's what we want. That's, that's what, we want. what the Wes Nelson's tunes do. To <laughs> exactly. Scratch. Wow. Exactly. And you've got a new one out. You were actually in the Love Island villa not yeah. too long ago. Yeah. So, yeah, brand new singles out um, with none other than the legend Craig David, which is weird to say in it out, like, out loud, like Craig David. Like, that was my icon, like, growing up, my idol growing really? up. So, yeah, 100%. You and um, Anton. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, no, yeah, the brand new single Abracadabra is out with Craig. Um, it was so much fun going into the villa, though. Like Because it was all stars, you yeah. probably knew quite a lot of the people you were actually performing to. Um, the, the reactions when I first walked in was wild. Did they think you were actually like coming on as like a bombshell or something? No. Like, they knew. They, they, no. If you finish your song and then you're like, you're like, popular with this girl. But they <laughs> was sh- like, it was shock. Hor- like, there's some people like, not even smiling, just... Like, what is going on? And I was just like, uh, brother. Uh, what was it really uh, awkward? A bit. I, I will be like, it, first, it. I think it was awkward for the first five seconds. And then it went, then everyone started like vibing. Okay. <laughs> but then I'm on stage with Craig David. That, that, is, that is one of the craziest moments of my life. Like, no, not a care in the world. But just going in, I was just like, I'm so glad I'm leaving. Because I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. That, that's time- not even saying you're above it or better than anything. It's not that at all. It's not that. It's just... I'm just not that guy anymore. And is it weird for you because when you were there, yeah. when you were like 20, yeah. that those moments changed your entire life. For sure. For the better as well. Exactly. And it was so natural then. Like it was so like I think after the first first hour I was I was settled in. I forgot the cameras was even there. But then now I was just like, whoa. That's so how do you reflect on your time on Love Island? Because it was ages ago. Like we were literally looking up all the details and we we're like, you were so young when you were on Love <laughs> yeah. Island. You know what? I had the best time of my life. Like it was so sick. Um, like, like I said, I was like 20 years old. I was a nuclear system design engineer. So I just went for it. And obviously it's put me in a, in a great position to launch my music. And yeah. Do you feel like you ever had any, when you started doing music, you had any people being like, oh, it's not serious. He's just a Love Island guy. That, that happens to like, to this day. Like, do you know, that, that's an ongoing thing. It's just like, I've had a great platform to yeah. launch it. But at the same time, it's not all hunky, like all it's... sunshine and rainbows. Because as soon as you put that music out, people are like, people want to hate like want to hate it. Like, give us an update on dating then, because you've left the villa. We're out of, we're out of touch with your life. I, I'm... <laughs> oh, so <laughs> I keep my scared. yeah no I keep my I keep my like my dating life super private now, um, purely for, because yeah. purely because I've been in a couple of relationships where it's been in sort of the public eye or up to public judgment, which isn't healthy for a relationship. Mm-hmm. Then I've got millions of people that follow us or this that and the other. They all have an opinion, and they ain't all the same. Yeah. And then it's sort of 
yes, I'm quite thick skinned and I understand what I what I like for my relationship is what is best for our relationship and et cetera. But at the same time, when has any human ever been adapted to a deal with millions of opinions on mm. the relationship yeah. or opinions and on And you them? absorb it. You're exactly. Absorbable, yeah. And subconsciously, it probably will affect your relationship, whether you, you like that or you, yeah. or you don't, it's, it is going to affect it. I'm, I'm happy in what, what I'm in right now um, in my dating life. So, um, so mysterious. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> and I'm keeping it, but it's it's very different to to any relationship I've ever had before. So it's it's very very chill and humble and nice and lovely. So you are in a genuine. Yeah, I guess you could say so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You, exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we wanted to talk a bit about types today. Yeah. Because it's just a classic thing you think of when you think of Love Island. What's your type okay. on paper? Yeah. What did you say your type was going into Love Island? And do you still believe in types? Has it changed? Um, or do you think it's a load of rubbish? I can't even remember what... They actually made us draw a, pink, a picture, didn't they? How could you even draw? Draw. Like, like I, I, also, I'm an awful... Uh, <laughs> I'm you awful at drawing. Like, this is like, can you, draw, can you draw your type on paper? I can't remember. They'll probably your type on I would, I would, I would draw a stick person and I don't think... Yeah, exactly. like, is that what, how, like, how, like exactly. I'm not an artist. That was what mine was as well. Um, but I think now, and I was talking to the boys about this actually the other day, like yesterday, we was, I went for dinner and he was talking about types and this and any of it. I was like, the new 10 is not a, is not a way that you look. It's it's a it's a personality. It actually is. Mm. Like good or like character. Good, yeah, good good morality. Like that's the new ten now. Because <laughs> that is the new ten. Like what are the qualities that you'd say is the new ten? A good a good moral compass is and respect. And I think what's great about society now is that people are challenging things more and people are challenging relationships and challenging what they like and what they don't like. That's great. It's so interesting because stat coming incoming but we spoke to bumble and they actually said that 63 percent of people would choose emotional maturity over looks now For on their sure. app and it's just yeah it's just basically what but you then, said yeah but how many of them will actually stick to that how many of them will actually be emotionally <laughs> mature and they're like actually you know what? i don't know because there's so much temptation everywhere right so I think it's easy for, and it's so accessible for people to just get some instant gratification from someone from liking the pick or these little micro bits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like this and like that. So I feel I feel like that I wouldn't even have social media though if I didn't do music or anything now though. Right. It's just for work. Yeah, it really is. But so other people use it like as a dating platform. Yeah. It is a tell me tell me it's not. It's I mean, the it's it, the biggest it's got to be the <laughs> it's got to be the biggest dating platform. Some people are dating app veterans though, like they're really on the hinge and the on, on the bumble. I'm not personally, no. No, I'm not on them. No. No. Are you? No, no, never. <laughs> you know, no fact, shame. Tell a lie. No tell shame. A lie. <laughs> tell a lie. Tell a lie. I went on one one time. Yeah, I've been on I've been on it before. Yeah, I went on one one time not... and I got banned. Why? What? I got because I don't think they thought it was me. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, I did the verification. What they thought you were catfishing? Yeah. And I got sent so many messages on Instagram saying someone's pretending to be you uh, on blah, blah, blah. I was maybe like, they just didn't think you'd be on that app. Why? I don't know. I'm just a bloke from Stoke. He needs I'm love just, too. Need love. <laughs> He's a bloke. I'm just a bloke from Stoke and I need love. <laughs> um, shame. You've talked about what you like. Yeah. What would be your icks or like what would be your turnoffs? Oh, ignorance. Just for no reason. Like an arrogance. That's my main, t them two things. It's just like, I can't do that. I'm out. I have no patience for that. So do you ever think types could be problematic? Because the the some of the girls on your season who said, oh, I want a mixed race boy, at the time there was a bit of press being like, Love Island is just perpetuating like problematic types and fetishization and Yeah, stuff. that is kind of wild, isn't it? When you actually, when when you say that is actually nuts, isn't it? Um, but I guess they they know what your type is and this, that and the other before. So I think I've always seen it as a bit like, human engineering like they know who they're gonna right the producers they know yeah. you and then they have people on standby they, they to... know you yeah and they know you so what well. they probably know you better than some of your friends because you've opened over opened yeah. up on the in the in the interviews before when they're asking it was like five or six interviews before that we did like coming down to london and, and asking every aspect of your dating and friend life so in your social life so they they have a really good character and they'll ask questions in different ways with different people so they know when you're sort of lying and pretending that you're this guy and you're not and you're this girl and you're not. And then they'll be like, cool, that's perfect. We've got about five other people that we know you're going to love. 
Right. And we've got someone that you, we think that you can really love and someone that you'll probably <laughs> and we'll like. And we'll them in later. <laughs> and we're gonna, put, we're gonna put them in first. Yeah. And then we're gonna put these in after yeah. and you're gonna lose your mind. Because they're like exactly what you yes, would want exactly, on paper. Exactly. And, and, and what... someone else will want. So then there's an argument. Mm, you see what I'm right. saying? They're clever with it. It's wow. really good. <laughs> it's really good. You know what makes me laugh as well? Is people like saying the six month contract, the Love Island contract. Yeah, can you oh, put that yeah. there? That really makes me I laugh. I see that all the time. Like, Whenever anyone comes out of Love Island, when they break up my, about six months tenancy, later, people say... My tenancy say, was a year, so how is that, <laughs> <laughs> how is, how is that going to work? Hey, wait, hold on. It's so you're not paid, you're not paid no, to stay together, no. But like, it does make me laugh when I see it, because I was just like, why does it look so bad every time people break up? I because think it's, it's always logical. around a mark. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always around like people like either it's like a twelve month or two years. I'm like, no, nah, there is there's there's no contracts. Okay. After. There is that pressure to move in with the person, not because you feel like the public's wanting you to do that, because you've lived with them for nine weeks, um, mm. but you haven't left each other's side. Okay, like not once. So then to come out. And most of the time you're living in different cities in the UK, that's weird. So you, you kind of want to be in the same sp space. So you're like, should we just move in together? That's mm. makes sense, right? So that's what we do. And I think there's a lot of pressure. That puts a lot of pressure on your relationship. Well, thanks so much for us for coming in. It's yeah. great to talk to you. Um, when's new music coming? We've just had some, but. So um, Abracadabra is out now, obviously with Craig, which was in, we went number one. So. To be in the charts now and and bringing Garage back, bringing Craig, bringing Craig back to his roots as well, and that's yeah. that's what I wanted. Um, and then we've got tour in May, which is going to be sick European tour. Yeah, it's Ooh. been great having you on. Where? Yeah, thank no, you. No, no, no thanks yeah. for having me. If you're looking for a new podcast obsession, we think you might like Murder They Wrote with Laura Whitmore and Ian Sterling. Listen to some of the world's most jaw-dropping crime stories on BBC Sounds. Now, where were we? So we're joined in the studio with Sanam, who won season nine of Love Island. Hi, Hi. Sanam. <laughs> Welcome. Oh. You actually won the season with Kai, yeah. who you're still with now. Yeah, live together. <laughs> and you were a Casa Amor girly as well, which that's quite rare. Is it the like, first time a Casa in... Amor girly won? So I've been told. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> God. That's a huge record. That's huge. <laughs> How did you feel about going in as a Casa Amor girl? Because they get a lot of hate sometimes. I think so, because Casamore's got that reputation of, like, they're going in to cause drama, or to, like, split people up, all of that, all of that. And I was just like, I'm going in to just live my best life. It's like, I know who I want to, like, mingle with. And I just did, like, what I did, and I actually found a genuine connection. Yeah. So it's so, not like I wasn't going in there to break anyone up. I was just going in there to be myself, and if anything came from it, it will come from it. Yeah. Thing, yeah. So what's, like, the process to kind of, like, know what you like? Like, do the producers kind of ask you, like, okay, so what's your type on paper? <laughs> what do you usually go for? That type of vibe? Literally, yeah. So I applied for Love Island, and when you apply... Well, actually, I think everyone goes through this, whether you applied or, sc or scouted. Every single person gets asked, what's your type? Who do, what do you look for in a man or a girl? Um, what, like, like looks what's what's your type personality all of that sort of question you've got to, like literally describe it like compare it to like celebrities and all that sort of stuff you've got to like literally explain it so much when you get like interviewed oh my god who's your celebrity so what, celebrity? Yeah, your <laughs> i think it changed about three times and then i think i just like i started googling people because i thought what celebrities do i fancy it's hard like, to think on, on the spot, spot. Yeah, yeah yeah but my main two were um michael b jordan and chris hemsworth okay yeah. love that okay. do you feel like you actually went for your type like that type in the villa? Well, that would be like my celebrity crush. But when I look back on like people I've dated before, had a crush on, Kai is my type. I've always liked someone that's taller than me. Didn't have to be six foot, just taller than me, but he is like six foot five, so that's like a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Not showing up or anything, but like he is six foot five. Six foot, six foot five. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a flex. So, yeah, um, so taller than me, um, someone that works out and looks after himself, which he does. And then just an all around like amazing, like kind, loving personality. And that's what he is. So that is literally just my type summed up. Like I don't really go for certain features or physiques or whatever, just tall, looks after himself and is a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. it's just compatibility, isn't it? Like yeah. seeing if you're going to have a good life someone. Obviously, Love Island is not known for it's like going for people's personality no. as much. It's kind of like, <laughs> you just get all the hotties, put them on an island and then everyone's like, oh, that's my type. Do you do you think that that like was common on Love Island? Or do you think other people went more for looks or like a certain like type of person that they were like, that's the type of person I like? Mm, I'm not too sure because I think when you're in Love Island, it's a very different situation. Like, even if you're not like, because, like, everyone's type, like, everyone's got a specific type. And actually, in Love Island, there's only a handful amount of people in there. Mm. And I think it comes down to a point where, actually, even if you're not, f like, solely attracted to them, you get to know them and that 
builds your attraction more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, yeah, there's might be like a small attraction there initially for some people, but once you get to know them, that's when you figure out actually are you compatible or not and if you can make things work. So I think it depends. Like some people go in there instant attraction and other people go in there like, mm, I'm not too sure about them, but then they get to know them over time. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I actually really like them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a bit of a mix. People at first consider looks. Obviously when you first see someone, you're like, okay, is that someone that I would want to date? Yeah. And then when it gets to like a more serious relationship, it's like, okay, Maybe. I think there has to be like that initial attraction because yeah. I think you're not really going to give them a chance if you're not attracted to them, are you? Mm. Otherwise, you can so, just yeah. get the, you know, the ick. The ick, yeah. yeah. No. They'll be doing something that's very normal, but... <laughs> what are yeah. your biggest icks or like put-offs on someone? Like what makes you go like... If they bite their nails, because I love okay. nails and I love like... You well do have green. really... I was actually Thank just looking you. at your nails. They're really, really, really gorgeous, actually. <laughs> so like a well green fan, if you're biting your nails, I'm like... Mm. Or if they're like, you know, like stubbly, like proper yeah, like yeah, bitten yeah, yeah. down or like... There's like hardly any nails on their Does hands. Does Kai have nice nails? Yeah, nice nails. Okay, and he doesn't bite his nails. He actually okay. clips them a lot. Though I'm like, why are you clipping your nails? But it's just like you, you can't have them going too long yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so like stubby nails, that's a no for me. Um, bad mannerisms, again, that's a no for me. I'm like, uh, but politeness, me, manners, yeah, yeah. manners. Mannerisms, so yeah. But according to this Bumble survey, they've said that 57 percent of people in the UK actually go beyond their type. So. No they're not actually restricting themselves to their, you know, written physical types that they've said. They're actually just going for I think what they like happen, in the though. Like, You might think you like something. Like you, I've said for years, like a type, and then you're like, oh, actually, no. Because the person like, 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 yeah, you build this like amazing, like perfect guy or person in your head. And then you realise actually like that's just like a fictional person you've built in your head. And actually people yeah. don't need to be look or be that way for you to be like attracted to them or be with them and I think actually it's so much more than just looks and I think that's what people need to realise as well like it's not all about looks it's actually about how you're treated as a person and who they are what they do and not just if they've got a six pack or not or if they've got like a flipping like I don't know some people like dad bodies dad bods do you get me <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Just about <laughs> <laughs> Resurgence. Yeah, they, they have. have. They have. Medium, the medium uglies <laughs> as well. Medium ugly is such a weird term, but yeah. I know the girlies be loving them. They be loving them. Yeah, but I yeah, agree with that. I think that's so true. Like, if you asked me when I was like a teenager, I would have given you the description, like, to the like T of like yeah. what, like, who I saw myself with. Like, when I was young, I used to play The Sims, right? I used to build <laughs> myself like the perfect, perfect, like, character of a man. I'm like, yeah, so I'm going to see myself in the, in the future. <laughs> And then you get to the real world, and you're like, oh, men don't look like this. <laughs> men are not scrum. sims. <laughs> to be fair, babe, you found the six foot five man. <laughs> you did all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you realise there's actually more to them than just look. Well, thank you so much for coming on the pod, Sanal. <laughs> yeah, it's been thank great you. to have you, you and you learn about me. your type or your yeah. lack of type. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, the evolution of your love life. And obviously, yeah. this is our love episode. So yeah. it's been great having you on. Thank yeah. you very, very much. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> So another TikTok I saw um, was this girl who filmed herself getting fired from her job. Just very much a Gen Z type of TikTok to film. Like, she's just filming herself during the meeting where they were like, you are going to be dismissed. Her name's Brittany. Let's have a look at the video quickly. It's, it's just very, very shocking. Very, very shocking. I have, like, really given my whole energy and life over the last four months to this job. And to be let go for no reason is, like, a huge slap in the face from a company that I really wanted to believe in. So that video had over 2 million views and the comments <laughs> were all, obviously people were like, oh my God, this is awful. Like the way they spoke to you is so bad. And obviously just people not loving the fact that you got fired over Zoom, like it's just very impersonal. Have you ever been fired from a job, by the way? No, 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 they want me. They want, they want me actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the jobs, they be whining me. I'm joking. I, you know, I'm not joking, actually. I've never been fired from a job, no. No, me neither. But if you did get fired, do you think you would ever want to film it and post it anywhere? Probably. Content is content, you know? Also, like, I, I know people that have jobs they're not necessarily passionate about. They did the job for the, pur the, pur the purpose to go out on nice dinners, to pay rent, to e actually eat food in general and for independence of life. Like, they didn't have a job They're because not living for the job. They're not living for that job. They're jobbing for the live. Exactly. <laughs> jobbing for the live. 
Do you know what I mean, though? I know what you, you mean. know what I mean. Like living yeah, to yeah, work, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. The old so classic. Like, they're not living to work; they're working. To yeah, work. exactly. Do you know what's interesting? She actually had job offers because this got so many views. So, firstly, her company like commented on it because they got not commented, but like they spoke about it and they said they stood by firing her, but they should have done it more like kindly. And I spoke to Dulcie Swanston, who is an HR expert, so she writes all about what you should and shouldn't do in the workplace. And I was speaking to her about this. She was like, I'm not surprised she's had job offers because like that's such a stressful situation to be in being fired. And if she can prove that she was like calm and collected no during it. No way. She was like, yeah, that's really no hireable. Way. <laughs> yeah. But to be clear, her overall advice was that you should not be posting yourself getting fired on the internet. She said from a recruiter's point of view, like also you get in legal trouble for fi- filming a private conversation and posting it publicly. If you post it publicly but the other person didn't know you are filming, you can get in trouble. And also she said it's like a heat of the moment thing. Like you don't want to be putting your emotions on the internet. It could look bad. It could come back to bite you in the butt. I mean, after last week's episode, we've seen everyone crying off after one day, everyone's yeah. emotions are all People's over the People's emotions are everywhere. <laughs> it's true. But I do think you're right. It's a, it's a generational difference. A 2023 survey of 10,000 18 to 25 year olds, so Gen Z, in the UK and the US, um, it was done by a consulting firm called Oliver Wyman. 60% agreed that a job does not need to be fulfilling. It should enable me to find balance and fulfillment in other aspects of so my life. So that's even more than half. More than people. half think jobs don't need to fulfill you. Life's yeah. not all about work, which is interesting because, like, back in the day, like, it was like a career, like, you'd stick with something for life. And now we kind of we hop around a bit more, like, we do hop around between. Yeah, jobs when more. I meet people, I, I always ask them, like, what's your name? Like, what do you like doing? I don't ever really go up to someone as, like, oh, so what do you do for work like like realistically there's that, more to you there's more to you than what you yeah. do for work back to the getting fired if you do get fired from your job which even if you don't care about your job you know it's still not nice to get fired yeah. Dulcie said that the idea of filming your employer like it she said it, I like the fact that it holds people to a higher standard so it's interesting that people are already doing it thank you so much for listening to Reliable Source as always we love ya thanks for tuning in Yes, and make sure you guys subscribe and follow so you never miss an episode. We're back every Thursday and you can find us on BBC Sounds YouTube, BBC Sounds app, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, always get get your your news from from a reliable reliable source. source. Ciao. Bye. 